Hey guys, Matt here from Laid Loss Harley Davidson. If you're looking for a newer used motorcycle in Southern California, we'd love to earn your business. One of the biggest complaints I hear from motorcycle purchasers today is to go down to a dealership only to be met by an inexperienced salesperson who basically is there to act as a pawn between you and the manager behind the black curtain in the back and engage in an endurance style back and forth shell game on pricing. Here at Laid Loss Harley Davidson, you come in and we get you a price immediately. We have sales staff here that are Harley-Davidson professionals that have demonstrated high levels of product knowledge that own and ride Harley-Davidson's in their spare time as well. We have three generations of Laidlaw family here. We don't have disposable employees here. You ever go to a dealership, buy a bike, and not be able to find the salesperson that sold you the bike at your 1K service? Here at Laidlaw's, we hang on to our guys. We hire good guys, sales professionals. Come down to us, get a quick price, no back and forth BS on pricing, and build a relationship with the dealership that's been here longer than anybody in Southern California. Thanks a lot, guys. Enjoy the video. All right, guys, so let's jump into a walk around on this 2019 FLHR Road King in Barracuda Silver. So basically, a little brief history, the Road King came about in 1994, so the Road King has been around for a very long time. It replaced a bike called the FLHS, the Electroglide Sport. So for a long time, the Electroglides all had fairings on there, and they made a sport model, which basically was a, a fairingless touring bike. And so the Road King replaced that Electroglide Sport as the only fairingless touring bike in Harley-Davidson's lineup. So the bike that's been out for a long time and it's had a lot of variations over the years. There was one in the early 2000s called the Road King Custom that was a little bit more of a, a minimalist styling, kind of like the Road King Special of today. And then there was a Road King Classic for a long time that had leather bags and laced wheels, which my understanding you can still get in South America, but in North America, all you can get is this Road King Standard. So starting from the front, you got a 17 inch impeller wheel on there. Here's a shot of the tank badge, unique tank badge to the Road King. On the Road King standard, you have a little bit more functional items than when compared to the Road King special. On the Road King standard, you've got passing lamps and a windshield like I mentioned. Here's a shot of the 107 cubic inch Milwaukee 8 engine. This engine was applied to the touring chassis bikes in the 2017 model year. If you haven't watched my Milwaukee 8 video, I'm gonna put a link to that in the upper right hand corner. I go into a lot of details on that. Basically the Milwaukee 8, it gets its name from you know Milwaukee being the uh, the headquarters and where Harley Davidson started and the eight being a reference to the eight valves. So it has four valves per cylinder. They went to a single cam on here, precision oil cooling system, a couple other things that I go into my video. So the Road King standard, you've got saddlebag guards here. Here's a shot of the seat. Seat's a little bit more pillowy, more cushioned than the Road King Special is. There's some detail with buttons on the side of the seat as well. More of a classic look with this bike. The Road King Special delivers more of a modern look. There's quite, quite a bit big difference in the aesthetics of the two Road Kings. Uh, there's several features on the Road King standard that make it a little bit more of a, a practical, functional bike than the Road King Special. I'll be getting into those. A shot of the saddlebags. Saddlebags are pretty much all the same on all the touring bikes. Here's a shot of those pins. Those two pins you spin counterclockwise to pull off the bag. And then you've got this single latch system that came about with the Rushmore project that was launched in the 2014 model year. Makes it a lot easier to open and close the saddlebags now with just one hand. So on the, going to the tail end here, you've got the classic lighting situation, single tail light that is real retro looking with the lollipop style, turn signals in the rear. Again, that's quite a bit different. That's a big contrast from what you see in the Road King Special. There's another shot of those saddlebag guards there. A lot of chrome on this bike. That's really the biggest cosmetic difference that you notice right away between the two Road Kings is the Road King Standard still has all the chrome on it. There's your horn cover there. They changed those horn covers when the Milwaukee 8 came out in 2017 as well. So here's a shot of the inside of your windshield here. Here's a shot of your fuel gauge there. I just clicked on the bike so that you see the fuel tack going up there. Here's a shot of your instrumentation. Taking the, the gas cap off here, you got six gallons of gas on this bike. 91 octane in California. Harley's usually are, are gonna want premium fuel, premium grade fuel. So here's the switches. You've got cruise control on this bike as a standard option. It's been that way since 2014 model year with the Project Rushmore. And you got your horn and your light switches over there. Here's the, the switch for the passing lamps there. I'll give you guys a shot of that. So you got those two additional passing lamps, which actually make a big difference at night, guys, when you're going on the road. These illuminate the road significantly better. You got a dual halogen bulb on these 
bikes as opposed to LED lighting. But it's it's I'm a big fan of the the additional passing lamps I put them on my street glide. That trigger switch there is going to cycle on this little digital screen here to let you know that you got the clock there, you got your odometer. You also got a gear and RPM readout as well, which is where I typically ride with my bike on. And you've got a trip A and a trip B. Hold down that trigger switch to zero out your two trip meters. You see an ABS light flashing there. That light's gonna come on when the bike is on ignition mode, but not started. Once you get rolling about 10 miles down the road, that ABS light should go out. If it doesn't, you know something's wrong with your ABS system. So check out your ABS if, when you get the bike up to speed, if the ABS light is still flashing. So let's go over to the Road King Special here. So immediately you're gonna notice everything's all blacked out on the Special as opposed to the Chrome. So quite a bit different overall cosmetic look to the Special. Also no windshield on this bike from the factory and you just have this single headlamp coming off of it. Kind of uh, went along the lines of less is more on this bike, make it a really clean custom looking bike. You got a big 19 inch wheel in the front as opposed to the 17 and this is called a turbine wheel. Not to be mistaken with the talon wheel that comes on the Rogue Glide and the Street Glide Special. So forks are all blacked out, headlamp, uh, nacelle is all blacked out. They call this the Hiawatha headlamp on here. There's a dual halogen bulb headlamp on this. You got a little bit thicker bar as well. This is an inch and a quarter diameter bar as opposed to the Road King Standard. You just have a one inch diameter bar and the, the cabling, you can see the electrical is run on the outside of the bars. And on the Road King Special, the electrical is all run on the inside of the bar. So a little bit cleaner electrical routing on the Road King Special. And the bars are all blacked out, of course. Another one of the biggest differences between the two is from the factory, you got a 114 cubic inch engine on the Road King Special as opposed to the 107. This was something that was just a change made just this year. So if you go back just one year to the 18 model year, these bikes were both shipped from the factory with the 107. Another side note too, the Road King Special first debuted as a mid model year launch bike in the 2017 model year. So this bike has not been out for very long. Here's a shot of the seat. It's a lower profile seat. It's a two up seat, of course. This seat is pretty much identical to the Rogue Glide and the Street Glide standard seat, but it doesn't quite have as much cushion or pillowing as the Road King standard seat. Here's a shot of the back uh, rear fascia of the bike. You got stretched bags on there. The stretched bags kind of wrap around the exhaust there, kind of give it more of that slammed look. They're not real, as far as a, like a functional standpoint, you really don't get that much more space in the bag, but it's more of a cosmetic thing than anything. Here's your derby cover with the 114 on the side. You can see the primary and everything is all blacked down on this as well, horn cover, uh, your shift pegs. The shift linkage there is still like that raw aluminum. I think they should change that. Maybe it's steel, I don't know what that's made out of, probably like steel. And here's a shot from the cockpit. You can see you got your fork lock there, which has been the same on all the Road Kings for a really long time now. And you got your black center console. Here's your fuel gauge, pretty much the same as the Road King standard. Me personally, if I were to get a Road King special, I would definitely go to the flush mount gauge and filler cap as well. Switch housings are all identical on both Road Kings. Pretty much identical to the all the other touring bikes as well for that matter. You got the bullet turn signals up on the handlebars by the grips. I'll point that out as, as well, as opposed to those big lollipop style turn signals that come down off of the passing lamps. Smoked lenses as well on the turn signals, which is kind of clean looking. And yeah, just everything on the engine, your rocker box covers, cam timer cover, side transmission cover, all blacked out. Yeah, if you're going for function, the Road King standard's better. Here's a shot of the rear wheel. So you've got a 16 inch rear wheel on the Road King standard as opposed to an 18 inch rear wheel on the Road King Special. So basically overall, if you're looking for like a hot rod style bike, then the Road King Special is gonna be kind of more in tune with that. Road King Standard, better ride comfort, bigger side wall on your tires, taller shock, more padded seats, you got the windshield and you got the passing lamps on there. So a little bit more practicality with the Road King Standard. If you're you know, a real long haul type rider, then the Road King Standard is gonna give you more of those comforts when compared to the Road King Special.
Uh, I think I like the Road King Standard better, uh, at least from a riding perspective. I mean, I, I have to admit that the looks of the Road King Special are uh, probably a little bit closer to my personal preferences. I like the kind of blacked out look of, of the bike and I think the color combo, especially with the Twisted Cherry and the, the blacked out uh, cosmetics on all of the, the engine trim. That was my favorite color last year on like the Streetlight Special and I like it again on the Road King Special this year. But uh, from a riding standpoint, I prefer the Road King Standard for a couple of reasons. It's got taller rear suspension, so that makes it a little bit plusher. Um, all the shorter shocks on the touring bikes are just sprung too stiff for me. Um, you know, if maybe if I had a passenger and they were loaded up with gear, it would be a little bit better. But uh, just there's not enough travel, and they've got to be pretty stiff to accommodate two up riding and guys larger than me and that means they're just they're too stiff for me from the factory um, that's not really unique to the road king um, special it's it's kind of all the touring bikes and really almost every bike i ride is probably too stiff for me um, until i get some custom suspension but uh, that's way more apparent on the two uh the, was it 2.2 inches or 2.6 inches of travel that the uh uh, the shorter shock touring bikes have. Whereas the uh, Rocade Standard has the taller rear suspension. It's also got a plusher seat, so those two things mean it's more comfortable. Um, it feels a little quicker side to side. Maybe that's because the rear is up a little bit higher and so there's a little less rake on the front. It makes it feel a little twitchier, I guess. Um, I, I prefer that, you know, the ability to transition side to side a little faster. Yeah, so you got bigger, small, or bigger sidewalls because you've got larger tires. Smaller diameter wheels means you're running a little bit more sidewall usually. Uh, whereas on the 19 inch, you know, you've got almost no uh, sidewall. So uh, that means the suspension's doing all of the uh, the work. Yeah, height wise, I'm still perfectly comfortable on, on both of them. I also, I think the ergonomics of the bars are a little bit nicer for me on the Road King Standard. Uh, I, I think that they come in a little bit more towards the rider and it just kind of hits me at uh, a nicer spot. Uh, in terms of my wrist, I don't feel like I'm uh, having to uh, tweak my wrist at all in an uncomfortable way. But I'm able to flat foot it. I am, uh, for those who don't know, I'm about 5'8", maybe 5'9", on a good day. And uh, I, I have no problem flat footing the bike at all. Uh, weight, you know, definitely feels a little bit taller, uh, but it doesn't feel any heavier than uh, the Roking Special. and. I think another reason why the steering might feel a little bit lighter is that the front wheel is probably a little bit lighter than the, the 19, you know. Uh, that's one thing that is really popular these days on, on baggers of all kinds is to go to a really big front wheel, um, 21s, 23s, 26s, and uh, while it looks cool, uh, it's one thing to keep in mind really that it making a, anything on your wheel heavier or anything on your front end heavier uh, makes almost every objective category of the bike worse in every way. Um, it makes it turn slower, stop slower, accelerate slower. In fact, putting a heavier rear wheel, actually, if you put the bike on a dyno, you'll actually lose horsepower uh, because the engine's having to work harder just to turn the wheel itself. So less of that power is going to get to the ground. Um, and in the front, you know, it's forcing the front suspension to work harder. It's forcing the brakes to work harder just to slow the momentum of the wheel. So um, it is nice, actually, to ride the touring bikes like the Electric Glide Standard and the Road King and uh, you know, the Limited to have that smaller wheel because you realize how nimble this chassis really can be. Um, and uh, you know, when you step up to that 19, you do lose a little bit of that. It's not as bad as going up to a 21 or a 23. Um, and uh, it's something that Matt and I were talking about earlier with the Road Glide CVO is while that 21 looks really cool and it's set up how it needs to be from the factory and it's probably the best setup 21 that you could get other than maybe like a carbon fiber one. Uh, and even that doesn't ride as well as a special. So that's one thing to, to remember is that the Road King is going to handle better and ride better than the special will because of the smaller wheels and the taller suspension. So power is definitely in the favor of the, of the 114. Um, I like the 107s better on the uh, soft tails, but on the touring bikes, I, I think that the extra torque of the 114 is, is nice when you're dealing with the extra weight of the bike. Um, it doesn't like to be in the low RPMs as much as the 107. I think that larger crank just means it's a little happier with a little more revs, but you do get more torque uh, once you do uh, rev the bike out, and I think that helps a lot with the weight. It's, it's noticeably peppier. Like we get a lot of questions about what's the difference between the 107 and the, the 114, and to be honest with you, they, they both make more than enough power for the application, but 
you know, no one's ever going to turn down more power. So uh, the 114 definitely has, I'd say it's a noticeable bit of a grunt over uh, the 107. Uh, it's not world changing, but it's definitely worth the, you know, roughly $1,300 premium that you would have on the bikes where it's optional. On this, obviously, you're going up a fair bit more, but you're also paying for the stretch bags and the blacked out cosmetics. So um, you can't really isolate that engine cost uh, as easily as you can on something like a Heritage where there's both engines available. Uh, but it's definitely a noticeable improvement. It's nothing to uh, uh, to scoff at. The 114 is a nice upgrade. Another factor I'd say that uh, influences uh, comfort overall on the bikes is the lack of the windshield on the, the special here. I think it's kind of a weird omission. I mean, I understand why they did it. Uh, you know, they kind of want to simplify the probably the process of buying the bike where they want the dealers to display it without the windshield. Uh, so therefore they don't include it with the bike. Uh, but it would be nice just to have it included and then give the dealers the option of displaying it on the floor without it. And I think that'd be nicer for the customer as well. Uh, you know, you're paying a pretty significant premium over the, the Road King and it kind of bugs me that it doesn't include uh, the windshield. You're actually missing some of the features that the Road King has, at least when it comes to comfort because that wind protection makes a big difference on the highway. Uh, the windshield on the Road King though is probably something I would actually have to swap because at my height it hits my my line of vision right where the crease of or where the edge of the, the windshield is and kind of distorts my vision. So if you're taller than me or shorter than me by even probably just an inch either direction you're going to be happy with it but I'm at the exact wrong height for that windshield and so um, even if they included one on this bike I'd probably swap it anyway. So. Uh, not that big of a deal to me. And most of the guys I know that buy the specials, since they're more focused on the visuals of the bike in a lot of ways, because they're you know, going with that lower suspension, um, and they were attracted to the bike probably in part because there was no windshield on there, they don't really run the windshield. As, I don't see a lot of guys adding the windshield back onto this bike. Um, you know, I see them doing stage kits, I see them doing slip-ons, uh, doing bar swaps, all sorts of stuff. So it's not like they aren't spending money to modify the bike. They just aren't throwing windshields back on because, you know, this is a bike that's heavily driven by its aesthetic. Um, and uh, that means that throwing a windshield on there is kind of the opposite of what most of the customers are looking for on this bike. You know, riding them back to back, it was kind of eye-opening how uh, just a few small changes uh, really dramatically affect the way the bikes perform, handle, and even just who the target audience is for the two bikes. So uh, I highly recommend coming out and, and test riding them if you're in the area. This is uh, this Road King that we have here is, is in our demo fleet. We'd be more than happy to take you out on one of our Road King uh, standards. Um, because really riding them back to back is, is going to be the best way to decide if you know, you're on the fence between the two bikes. Um, but uh, I definitely say that if you're the kind of guy who's going to be putting a lot of miles on the bike, you're going to benefit more from the comfort of the Road King. Uh, if you're looking for something that's more of a weekend toy that you know has got the big motor and uh, is just a lot of fun to ride, but still more than capable of going out on the highway and uh, putting in some serious miles every now and then, uh, you know, go with the Special because you know it's got that style, it's got that power uh, advantage. And it's not a bad touring bike by any stretch of the imagination. It just doesn't have all the comfort that the uh, the Road King Standard does. So I'd highly recommend test riding them both back to back. Hey guys, Matt here. So Nick and I just got off the Road Kings, and I just want to kind of run down some of the main significant difference differences between the two, and some of the things that I felt like are the most important things that you guys should know to really help you make a decision between the two motorcycles. So we'll start off first here with the Road King Standard. Now the Road King Standard has been around for a long time. There's been a couple different variations over the years. They had the Road King Classic, which is still available in South America, if I'm not mistaken. They've also had a Road King Custom that ran through the, the early 2000s as well. They've taken both of those away in North America, and we just have the Road King Standard now. Um, and then they added the Road King Special in the second half of the 2017 model year. So a couple things on the Road King Standard. As Nick kind of mentioned already, there's definitely more functionality here. So you've got the windshield, you've also got the passing lamps. You know, uh, I know Nick, Nick mentioned the windshield already, but the passing lamps is kind of a big thing, especially if you're riding at night, the extra lighting is really nice. Plus just having the extra housings here, if you wanted to upgrade to LED lighting, it's a lot less expensive. 
to upgrade to the all LED lighting on the Road King Special because you have to incur the extra cost of adding the, the housing here on the passing lamps. So you've got that already, so there's the extra equipment there. Um, as Nick already mentioned quite a bit, and I'll just kind of glaze over this real quick, you know, the wheel size is definitely different. Basically, you're getting cosmetics with the Road King Special at the compromise of, of ride quality. And uh, Nick articulated, you know, the things as far as the handling and how that impacts your handling pretty well, so I won't get into that too much. The, uh, the seat's definitely a little bit more pillowy on the Road King Standard. One more thing adding to the comfort of the Road King Standard. And just the overall style and everything is more classic on the Road King. Which brings me to another point. If you want that Road King classic look still, it's very easy to convert this Road King standard into the old style Road King classic. Harley Davidson actually offers a leather bag that you can take these hard bags off and add the leather bags. In addition to adding spoke wheels, lace wheels, which we actually have on the bike over here that Nick can show you. So you do the, the lace wheels in addition to the leather bags and essentially you have a Road King Classic. In the past, the Road King Classic always had additional features like cruise control on it when the standard didn't, maybe it was an upgrade. Uh, now that's all kind of gone away where the Road King is, basically the only options on there is just the ABS, with or without ABS. Um, so a little bit more versatility as far as if you want to go to a different style. You know, this style right here, uh, it's kind of our Vicla style, if you want to call it that. It's pretty, pretty popular in the East LA area that, you know, our, our dealership is located in. And so that's pretty much all your chrome, ape hanger bars. Uh, I'll comment too that the Road King is probably my number one most favorite Harley Davidson to put ape hanger bars. Ape hangers go really well on a lot of different bikes, but just the overall lines and just the, the stance of the Road King, the the eight hanger bars are really good on the Road King. My first Harley Davidson was actually a 2009 Road King with 18 inch eight hangers on here. So yeah, big fan of this, this look. And again, this is kind of a, you're all chromed out. We have this bike available on our showroom right now, by the way, it's a brand new 2019 Road King standard with, you know, a ton of extras on it. Now, if you're interested in, in checking it out, come on down to the dealership. We'll move on here to the Road King Special now. So the Road King Special, like I said, has been out for two and a half years now, approximately. Came out the, the latter half of the 2017 model year. So basically, this, this bike is a couple, two, three thousand dollars more than the standard. And really what you're paying for there is the cosmetics. You're paying for all the blacked out features on this bike the bigger wheels. Uh, this is a, called a turbine wheel. Really cool wheel. I like it. I definitely like the, the look of it a lot better than the Road King standard. It looks like a custom wheel, you know, and it comes right from the factory. So, you know, you have all the Harley Davidson R&D behind it. Uh, it's going to ride correctly. It's going to fit correctly. It's not going to rub your fender or any of that BS that oftentimes we have to deal with when we change out fenders on bikes. So yeah, you're getting really this custom cosmetic look from the factory with that additional cost you're incurring on the Road King Special. That, and like Nick said, you know, you got the bigger motor, the 114, which is definitely noticeable, uh, especially out on the highway. Uh, you roll it on, you definitely have more power. It's, it's noticeable power. It's not just a number on the side of the derby cover. It is noticeable. And if I have to quantify that, it's about 10% more power. It's about 10% more horsepower. And you got about, I wanna say 13, 14 additional foot pounds of torque as well. And, and that is noticeable and that was kind of reiterated to me when I rode it. A couple of things that stood out to me, I've ridden both these bikes a lot, but it's always nice when I do these, these videos to ride them back to back. And so I get kind of a fresh uh, print or image in my mind, exactly the differences between the two. I, I was out on the freeway. Nick was on the special out on the freeway. I was on the standard on the freeway. That wind factor is kind of a big deal. The windshield on the standard really makes that freeway riding at high speeds just a lot more of a calm subdued like experience where you're out there you have your senses better your eyes your ears just everything is just a lot more calm and it feels like you're going slower than you are the road king special however out on the freeway it's fun you can do it obviously it's got more power which is nice but you know just having that wind blast you in the face when you're doing 70 80 miles an hour it's more of a you know you have to keep your attention focused on the road and you just have to, I guess, be more alert and your senses have to be more kind of strained out on the highway. Whereas if you don't have the wind hitting you, 
your senses are a little bit more relaxed. So that's kind of the best way I, I can describe that. Windshield goes on here easily, but really when it comes down to it, guys, if you're trying to decide which bike to go, I would I would take two things into consideration. One, if, and I'm saying if you decide for sure you want the Road King, we're not talking about the Road King compared to other bikes, but if you know you want a Road King, I would take into consideration what you're gonna use it for. Are you a guy that gets out on the road quite a bit? Um, if that's the case, the Road King standard is gonna have more functionality with the additional lights, uh, the better ride comfort with the seat, the suspension. Um, Nick already talked about this, but just to be clear, the Road King standard has a taller shock. The Road King special has the shorter shock that comes on the road glide and the street glide as well. Uh, and then you combine that with the larger wheel, less sidewall tire, a little bit rougher ride when you hit those big bumps. Uh, it's a very smooth ride. It's still on the touring chassis, which is the most important thing. But when you compare it to other bikes within the touring family that that have the taller shock, it's a little bit rougher ride. So I would take into consideration the, the way you're going to ride it. This will do the freeway just fine, but it's not going to be quite as comfortable as the Road King standard. And you're not going to have the functionality of some of the other things like the lighting and the windshield on it. Second thing I'm taking into consideration is the style you're going for. Uh, which you know style is a big thing in the Harley world a lot of guys buy Harleys for the style uh, myself included hell I'll buy the Harley Davidson anyways I'm in the industry let's be honest but the Road King special again has that really cool custom look right from the factory wheels that a lot of guys don't feel like they have to change even if they're doing a custom build you don't really feel like you have to change that wheel because it really looks really really good and you know it's gonna it's gonna perform well when compared to an aftermarket wheel. Some of these aftermarket wheels guys are so freaking heavy. Uh, they just, everything that Nick described when he was talking, I mean, you, you magnify that by like five folds and that's what's gonna happen with aftermarket wheels. So I usually really caution people when they put a big old 21 inch aftermarket wheel on there. It really compromises your suspension. It really compromises your handling, your braking, your acceleration. Everything that Nick said that this wheel does when compared to the 17 inch wheel, you, you multiply that by like tenfold, and that's what's going to happen with a big aftermarket wheel on there, which is fine if you're going to take it to the shows and you know what you're getting yourself into. I can appreciate a bike with a big wheel on it, but if you're a, 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 purpose, a purposeful, practical rider, which I feel like more riders are nowadays, less riders are all about the, you know, taking it to the local show and more riders are more about getting on the road and putting miles on it. I feel like that's kind of where the... Uh, where the, the preference is shifting right now with, with our current modern day riders, then stick to the stock wheel. Anyways, guys, yeah, thanks a lot. If you have any questions, as always, come uh, comment in the comments below, and I'll be sure to try to get back to you. If you want to test ride a bike, come on down and see us here at Laidlaws. Thanks.